All right, so welcome again to your Designing Your Career panel, uh, where we're going to learn from three amazing panelists about their digital marketing career paths to hopefully inspire you and get some questions answered. Our goal today is to have a conversation with three amazing digital marketing professionals, hear about their different career paths and how they successfully navigated their job search. Uh, we'll start with some introductions of everyone, uh, lead a panel discussion with some questions that we've populated already, um, and then uh, feel free if questions come up for you that you want to ask folks, feel free to write those down or put those in the chat, um, and we'll have time at the end for you to ask questions. Um, our moderators tonight are Brooke Haig, um, who is one of our technical experience uh, learning designers, and myself, I help to write the curriculum for our digital marketing certificate uh, and also support instructors. And our three amazing panelists are Kendall Bennett, who actually works for PathStream and completed our digital marketing certificate. Uh, Sammy Miller, who is the digital marketing director at nav.it. Um, and Rayann Turner, who is also a PathStream alumni and has had an absolutely incredible uh, career in the last couple of years, uh, is now a SaaS senior marketing manager at AnyDesk Software. And Brooke, I'll hand it over to you to get those questions going. Thank you so much, Nina. Um, very excited to be on the webinar this evening um, and tuck in because I think it's going to be a really great um, experience. I'm, I'm excited about this panel. I'm excited about um, all the, the questions and we're just going to jump right in with our first question. So tell us the story of how you started uh, your, your journey in digital marketing. How did you know it was something you wanted to pursue? What did you do to break into the industry? And I think I'm going to hand this one over to Rayanne to get us started. Thank you so much. So, um, so I uh, background in my my uh, experience is that I actually have been a business owner, and so I had background into you know what sales meant for me, what marketing meant for me, and then as a business owner, like how I brought it all together. Um, where I think digital marketing came in is like, I didn't understand SEO. I didn't understand a lot of the, you know, the technical terms of like where marketing was going. So like back in my day, I would uh, put cookies together and I would knock on businesses and say, Hey, are you interested in, in my product? And I would bring cookies and like, like that's, that was marketing to me as, as, the world progressed. And as we went into COVID, you couldn't do that anymore. And so, you know, I was left with like, how do I make my business relevant? And I didn't know how. And so um, COVID shut everything down. Um, I was so fortunate enough to be introduced into PathStream. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I don't know exactly what I'm going to get out of it. But I feel like you know, I need to learn, I need to seek out information to, you know, make my business survive, essentially. And so I just, I, I did that. And I learned so much and it left so many question marks, like by the end of it, whereas like I have kind of like a tickling of like what I need to know, but there was so much more that like, I wanted to know even more than what, you know, I had, I, I was introduced to. So, um, you know, past stream for me was just like the impetus of like, like there's another world out there, you know, it's not just knocking on doors, selling cookies or, you know, putting cookies in front of like prospective clients. So it, it, it really was like a catalyst of like, like there, there's a whole nother world I wasn't even aware of. And so, when I started going through the program, it really just um, brought into perspective, like I, I, the, I, there's so much more I need to learn. And so I'm very grateful for the things that I was able to collect along the way. And, um, you know, that, that kind of was like the impetus of like digital marketing is 
like literally the shit. Like you have to understand what digital marketing is for any business, whether it be your own or anyone that you're working with. And Pastream definitely helped me, you know, bridge that gap. Brianna, I, I love the story. And when you mentioned cookies, uh, my brain went to like, oh, <laughs> I just I gotta write this down because I hear about cookies on the internet all the time. And then and then you were talking about chocolate chip cookies, I think. <laughs> yeah. So, right, right. A little bit of a yeah. So, but I feel like that's so relatable in a sense. And so love to hear that, you know, your journey and how kind of it opened up a new world to you. This um the COVID was such a uh, you know, transitional, a lot of reasons. And um, you took the opportunity to sort of pivot and learn so much about digital marketing. So I'm super excited to hear more about your, your story as well as we go on here. Thank you for sharing. Um, yes. Yes. And you're right. You're right. Digital cookies are different than traditional cookies. <laughs> They're two totally different things. Awesome. Well, I'm glad I know something. Um, so uh, of our other panelists, uh, does somebody want to jump in and talk about how you started in digital marketing? Sure, because I actually have the opposite of Brienne, actually. So um, I started my career in nonprofit fundraising and grant writing. And this was back in 2011 when there was a lot of transition going on and I was laid off. And I tried to find a job, I tried to find a job and nonprofit jobs weren't paying me what I needed to frankly uh, pay my student loans. And so I was not looking for a career in marketing. I was just looking for something that would pay the bills. And I happened to know the owner of a marketing agency. I didn't even know what he did, but we had you know, attended events together and um, I saw him, we were at an event together and he was like, oh, well, you know how to write. We're hiring freelance writers, um, come work for me. And so I started in freelance writing doing SEO. I did not know what I was doing, had never heard of that before. I just knew that here are some guidelines and here's what I need to do to start writing. And so I was a freelancer for about a month before a opportunity opened up to become a full-time employee. And one thing that I was, I, I will always be very thankful for was the opportunity to work in that agency uh, because I learned everything. I was able to do paid ads. I was able to do traditional marketing. I was over here doing IT related stuff. I had never done HTML in my life, anything like that. So I didn't start out in marketing, but it's become really like what I wanna do and, and being able to really work in an ever-changing industry because that was the other thing is is I didn't I I had maybe a not a great view of marketing to be honest of like like this is what marketing to me is and it's not that at all it's very analytical and you need a you need to have a lot of skills and marketers are some of the most skilled people I will ever interact with and I'm sort of glad to be part of that group um and yeah it was it was a very interesting experience uh, well, thank you for sharing. And I, I, I'm hearing also, so Rayanne had a background in, in running her own business and you had a background in nonprofits. Like we're, we're, there's a lot of varied experiences on the panel. And I love that the opportunity really came from you saying, oh, well, I, I need, you know, I need to do something and this is an opportunity. I'm going to take it. And it like, obviously it's brought you to this, this point. So again, really excited to hear more about all, uh, your journey as well. And I, I, I know Kindle also has, you know, a, a background to bring a different story to bring as well. So I'm going to hand it over to her to hear more about your background, how you got into digital marketing. Yes. So my start in digital marketing began from blogging. So I had a huge issue after college graduation of not having a hard time getting a job because I didn't understand like the applicant tracking system. I didn't understand how to actually put myself out there. And once I did start to learn it bit by bit, I ended up starting a personal and professional development blog to teach others what I wish I had known as soon as I had graduated. Because even with a degree, for me, it wasn't enough to get the job. It was a full-on process. 
So once I joined a blogging community on Facebook, bless them for wanting to help me as much as possible, but they were just pinging me with, hey, you need to learn content marketing, uh, social media marketing, email marketing, all these different types of marketing. And I'm like, why are there so many different types of marketing? So as I'm looking up, I'm like, okay, what, what is this? What is that? Uh, Path Strings course ended up popping up for Facebook digital marketing. And once I looked into it, I saw that, okay, this looked like it encompasses pretty much everything that um, the state book group is telling me that I need to learn. So at that period, I was working at an e-learning company as their multimedia designer. And I knew that they did not have a marketing team. So I showed them the program. And even though they weren't able to cover the full program, they was like, okay, look, since it's continuing education, we we do have a benefit that can give you partial reimbursement if you're still interested. So I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, so I used the digital marketing program and mostly to try to better myself as a blogger. And once I did get that certificate and was ready to present it to this company, like, hey, look, this is something we could probably do. In the midst of 2020, a week after I got that certificate, I and my team ended up getting hit with a layoff notice. And I went into panic mode because I, I was wondering, like, how, what am I supposed to do now? Like, I no longer have a job. I have the certificate. What am I going to do? I'm, I'm a new blogger. So uh, I reached out to Career Services and I got connected with Amy Ahern. And she was the one that suggested that I advertise myself as a freelancer in the midst of the pandemic. Since I had an artistic background, uh, one of the keywords that we identified in the program was content creator instead of multimedia designer. So um, in a sense of using SEO that's taught in the program, I started updating all of my uh, profiles as a content creator. Uh, I updated my resumes and I pretty much marketed myself as someone that can help small businesses survive the pandemic by helping them with their content creation. And by doing that, that also helped me build up my portfolio, uh, participate in other brand collaborations like with LinkedIn Learning and Wall Street Journal. And then after a year, I was able to present this pretty much a panic portfolio that just grew into what it was to pass three. It was like, hey, look, y'all program pretty much helped me survive the pandemic. Uh, I see that you're hiring for a marketer. I can take what I learned and help y'all too. Um, and Kendall, what I'm hearing is you were like a visual designer at a company that at, at more complicated than a visual designer, but I'm boiling it down to that's an element <laughs> of the work that you did. Um, and you, you know, I, I thought it was also interesting that the company didn't have a marketing team, which seems like a, like a real opportunity. So that's kind of the kernel of where you started. And obviously it just like blossomed. Um, you mentioned, you know, a moment of panic, but you certainly turned that into a, like an opportunity, um, and ended up with this portfolio, which I'm sure people would want it, will want to hear more about. Um, but I, I appreciate you sharing your story as well. Um, and let me pivot to the next question, which um, was there ever a moment in your career when you faced, faced imposter syndrome? What was that like? And how did you overcome it? So I'll hand this. Kindle, if you don't mind kicking, kicking off this question for us. Yeah, I can continue it. I'll be honest. I still battle imposter syndrome. Like, it's... It, it, I, I can I would say that the way I overcome it is mostly because of my fiance and my best friend. It's like they know that I can overthink things and I know that I can depend on them to pretty much kick me into gear. So if you're someone that is constantly like nagging on yourself, like for example, one of the first places that I reached out to, like uh, I was offering to help them with video content. And because it was as a freelancer, 
when they sent back to me, like, hey, how much are you charging for uh, you to edit some of our videos? I really had no idea what to charge. So it was like, I spoke with my fiance. He's like, okay, look, let's do the math. You have, you have the experience. You have videos online that can show that what you were doing. And it's like, we did the math real quick. And once we got the number, we sent it back to him and he saw me just freaking out. Like, oh my God, what if I charge too much? They're going to like laugh in my face. And they're like, okay, yeah, we can do this. I'm like, oh my God, they said yes. And he's like, I'm pretty sure a lot of people charge more, but (laughs) good job, baby. So a lot of times, like you just have to try. Like the most of the game, most of the time, all they the worst they can say is no. So just go out there, have your little panic moment, find your support group, and then if they say yes, celebrate. If they say no, try again somewhere else. I I absolutely identify with you talking about your experience with imposter syndrome. Uh, and what I'm hearing from you, because I think there are a lot of ways to deal with it, is like. Um, push through anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. an imposter, but do the thing anyway. Um, and uh, you can have that feeling and it's okay. And like you said, seize the opportunity. Um, Rand, do you also want to um, chime in? Yes. Yes. So um, I feel like, I mean, honestly, my whole career, I, I, you could say is imposter syndrome. And I think a lot of us in digital marketing have like this, you know, we're bold and we're convincing and I come from a sales background. And so maybe that's, you know, where I'm speaking from, but, you know, I've, I've, I came into the industry, not knowing anything and pretending that I did. And, you know, yes, I own businesses and yes, I had, you know, sales experience, but like digital marketing, like I had no idea, like PathStream totally helped me (laughs) to have like some sort of semblance of like kind of what I'm talking about, but I had no real experience. And so imposter syndrome is something that I've dealt with literally since day one. But um, I think the beautiful part that the way that it's kind of morphed is I've been able, I've been afforded a lot of opportunities with um, confidence and with certainty that I go into situations saying, if I don't necessarily know how I'm going to do it, like I will find a way. And there's, I feel like digital marketers are resourceful. And if they don't know exactly how they're going to do it, that like they'll, they will find a way because I mean, this industry, you can, you can teach yourself but it's so much easier to have, you know, uh, like a, like a, a team behind you, and to have, um, you know, uh, like like a like a something like past stream behind you to to be able to like say, yeah, this is how, you know, this is how you get to from point A to to point B. And so, in in my experience, you know, I definitely had that, but I also struggled with like okay, I have this opportunity, like, I'm not quite sure how to do it. And, you know, you, you get resourceful and you figure out like, who's in your network that you can tap into, you know, who, who, who are people within, you know, your organization that like know more than you to help you get to where you need to go. And I mean, I will tell you, I'm the senior marketing manager for a global SaaS company. And just this week, literally two days ago, they tapped me and said, can you lead our global SEO strategy? And the only reason that they asked me is because I took a class from Neil Patel because I didn't quite understand SEO and I wanted to understand more. And so I applied and I got a scholarship and I like, if you don't understand something, seek it out. And that's what past stream is. Like I didn't understand digital marketing. So I sought it out. I didn't understand SEO. I sought it out. And it's like your network is your power. The people that you surround yourself with and the people that know more than you are your superpower. And they will give you more opportunity than you could possibly fathom. And 
I am so grateful for where I'm at right now because, um, you know, you don't have to be the expert. You like, you will learn it, you know, and there's the people that need you will find you. And so, um, yes, that's a very long answer, (laughs) but like, um, always seek out if you need to understand more, find it out, like always raise your hand and be willing to learn more than figure out your value add, always add value to the organization that you're going into digital marketing. There's so many facets of it, like always be pushing and always be giving more than, than what they already have. So that's my two cents. (laughs) Uh, I really love the idea of the network and, you know, reaching out to your network as a resource because people want to be helpful. Um, let you, let let people help you. And also it sounds like you really got an amazing opportunity, not because you knew everything, but because you were willing to show that you wanted to learn and grow. Um, and, you know, it, it surfaced this opportunity for you because you didn't know something. So you went and learned it and now people know, you know it. <laughs> so that's, that's a really well, thing. and they, they they know that you're willing to learn. And I think that's the key. You know, you don't have to be the expert in anything, but if you're willing to always be learning and willing to always be um, available for that value add, like you, you want to be resourceful and collect all the information along the way, because digital marketing changes constantly. It's not like you go, you know, through past stream and you get a certificate and you know everything. It's like, It is always evolving. And if you are malleable and if you are able to collect along the way as things progress, as they will always do, like you are in a great position to be that that keystone to like help companies grow and be open to that, you know, and be be available to um, always be learning and growing. So that's that's how I've I've found success. I love it. I, uh, there's, there's this thing, this quote from the movie, like always be selling, but I like your quote, always be learning, you know, always be learning. I think that's true of, of any career, but certainly it makes a lot of sense in this context. Um, so on to the next question, what's one thing you wish you knew about breaking into the digital, into digital marketing that you didn't know when you started? I can actually take this one to to piggyback off of what Rayan was saying, because the thing that I wish that I had known about marketing is how much it changes and how much you have to spend a lot of your time educating yourself about new changes. And so my going back to like my beginning, I thought that marketing was pretty static that like, there's not a whole lot that goes on with it. You do X, Y, and Z. Um, That is not the case at all. You are um, always having to to keep up on trends. What is going on with with Twitter and the new owner? What's going on with Google? What's going on with these different pieces and facets to your job? And what's going on with your audience? Because you guys, like, Marketing before COVID and marketing after COVID are very, very different. Um, And how you reach your people are very different. And so one thing I wish I would have known is that like you have to spend a lot of time keeping up with those trends. And I think it's a lot of fun to do that. I think it's a lot, a lot of fun. And it's one of the more interesting pieces of my job, but it wasn't what I thought I would be doing. Um, I, and I, I just keep coming back to something that I'm learning, which is how, and it makes a lot of sense, but, um, um, you know, how, uh, dynamic digital marketing is it, well, digital marketing certainly is dynamic because of, you know, everything that is involved in the landscape of our online lives that change constantly. So you have to keep up with that. Um, Kindle, it looks like you were going <laughs> to. It's true. And ironically, that was my answer to like, I wish I knew how how fast it changes. It's like with us on the marketing team, since I focus more on the social media side, it's like weekly, we're like, okay, what's going on with TikTok? What's going on with Twitter? What's going on with Facebook? And it's 
constantly researching and experimenting, trying to figure out like, okay, what's going on? And it's not just the changes that may be happening externally on these platforms, but also internally in the company. Like the company might decide that they want a, they want to target a different audience. Um, the company might decide to expand. They might decide to narrow down. So as part of the marketing team, you have to be flexible with those changes. So if you're considering digital marketing right now, or you're currently in the program, you're like, okay, look, I feel like I'm completely behind in this. No, you're not. Because I'll tell you right now, whatever's going on now is going to be different for three months from now. And with you coming in from a, with pretty much a fresh mind, you're going to be able to learn the most accurate information instead of having to unlearn and relearn what you've already previously thought was the set case. And everybody's doing it. Everybody <laughs> in marketing has to be going through the same thing when a uh, platform updates <clears throat> or when something changes. And so that's one of the more dynamic things about it too, because you actually are in a community of people who are trying to do the same thing that you are and you're all having to deal with it and and getting to experience it together also it, oh, sorry i was just gonna say it sounds like it's never boring but okay this is something i would really have, like definitely push though with you getting into digital marketing make sure you get into an industry that you passionately enjoy because with so many changes going on, you're doing a lot of research. So I've, I've, I've already read more case studies for e-learning and career development than I thought that I ever would. But because that stuff I genuinely enjoy, it wasn't torturous. Some of it was boring, but <laughs> I enjoy, whoa, oh, my computer like flashed for a moment. But yeah, it's like <laughs> if you decide to get into digital marketing, make sure you get into an industry that you genuinely enjoy, whether it's fashion or tech, or maybe you love working with animals because you're going to be doing consistent research to keep up with the changes. Well, and also, can I um, chime in on that? Is yes. I, I, I actually didn't have a passion for marketing, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, I come from sales, right? So I told you guys earlier that I own businesses and um, I, I always, I, I got frustrated that like there was a, uh, I had a business, there were sales, but like I was frustrated that marketing wasn't like supporting sales. And so I, the reason I got into marketing is I was like, okay, I know what my salespeople need and I'm going to make marketing help support sales. And that is the, that is the whole impetus of marketing is to help support sales. And so I made the transition and I think Pathstream helped the digital component of it. But like, I always had that like traditional marketing where I could, I could figure out, you know, the cookie thing, like where I could knock on doors and say, here, here's cookies. But like, this day and age, you can't knock on cookie, you know, like bring cookies to offices. So like, it's a whole digital thing. It's SEO, it's, it's, uh, you know, PPC, it's, it's everything else. Um, and so my advice is that if, even if you don't love marketing, you need to have marketing. If you own a business, you have to have marketing. If you're going to work for a business, you have to understand how marketing is the fuel for sales and how it supports sales. And so it doesn't matter, you know, where you're at in anything, but like if you can crack the code and figure out who your ICP is, so your ideal customer profile is, like who your people are that you're trying to target, you can have so much fun trying to identify how to connect with them, like what, what, what makes them tick, you know, how to reach them digitally. Like marketing is so amazing. It is so, it is so fun. It is a, it is a, um, like not only like a, um, like a cerebral thing, but it's like, you know, it's, it, it, there's just, it's, it's an art and a science. Like there's so much amazing stuff you can do from it once you understand who you're targeting and the tactics to reach these people. And so 
like I just I, I love it like it has become like the thing that I like that drives me it's no longer I'm no longer like a closer at like for sales I am a marketer to like understand the the um you know the the mind the mindset and like where to reach these people and you know it's it's more of like a um it's 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 exciting. Like there's just so many different ways that you can approach and tackle your, your ICP, your ideal customer profile. So um, yeah, this is just like, uh, like digital marketing is so awesome. It is so awesome. If, if you can figure out how to make it work for your business, which we all have, which is why we all love it. Uh, you often hear sales and marketing, you know, that, and, and there should be a symbiotic relationship. So I was surprised to hear you were in a situation where it felt like you wanted to get in there and um, and establish that relationship. Um, and and that makes a lot of sense that your skills would transfer. It's almost like uh, you know, in a sport, a coach is should be a former player. You know, having those skills going into coaching, you know, that's really going to enhance your ability to, to do the work. So your sales background is enhancing your ability um, to, to do your marketing work. But also as you're talking, I'm thinking, this sounds like a logic puzzle. It's like the Sudoku, it's fun. It's, you know, it's more than um, it's, there are elements of this that can be really interesting because you're digging in. And I don't know if I'm interpreting this right, but it does sound like it's kind of a, a puzzle. You're figuring the pieces out, you're using data and you're trying to as you say, like figure out your ideal customer as an example um, of one thing you're trying to, to do. So it's, it's you know, really engaging and interesting. And, um, so, yeah. Um, so we'll move on to the next question. What's the best advice uh, you received during your job search process for digital marketing roles? So who wants to start here? Any advice that you think would be helpful? Kindle. I can go. So I have a two-parter for this. So the first one wasn't specifically for digital marketing, but it came from um, a, a professor. And that was whenever it's time for you to apply to a lot of the job and you look at that job description, think of the bullet points as a rich, spoiled kid's Christmas list. Like they're going to list everything they can possibly think of that a rich kid, will, a spoiled kid will probably see on TV saying like, hey, look, I want all these devices, but the kid's gonna be lucky if they get at least half of that list. So if you see a job posting that you're like, oh, I really want this, but I don't have everything that's on this list. I don't even have most of the thing that's on the list. If you can fulfill even like half of that list and you have the motivation to learn the rest, go ahead and apply. <laughs> And then with um, marketing, uh, digital marketing doesn't just apply to products, it uh, applies to you as well. So with bad marketing, you will see like, hey, here's my product, buy it. Uh, good marketing strategy provides a solution to whatever your targeted audience problem is. So that was one thing I had to learn as a freelancer. It was like, hey, what is this individual's problem and what is a skill that I have that can solve that problem so a lot of the questions especially the interview questions that they may ask you uh, try to craft a story that involves your personal experience that ends with uh, solving a problem that they need to solve within their marketing team and you know when you say freelancer can you describe a little bit what that means I, I think it's straightforward, but. Oh, no problem. All right, so ugh, it's, so, it's so broad. So with me, uh, with freelancing, um, I would pretty much kind of <laughs> stalk LinkedIn and try to figure out like what individuals were having problems with. And like, let's say uh, I would see someone that's asking questions about a particular topic. If I see that they have a blog a blog site or anything because I had a blog, I could reach out to them like, hey, look, uh, I see that you're needing to provide information about this particular information. I do have knowledge about this. Uh, this is uh, my blog. Uh, could 
I possibly provide some assistance for you. Um, I would provide like a bundle package that I could provide for them. Some others may, I might look on their social media page and see that their content is very slow and like, okay, hey, look, are you still working on your brand awareness? I do help, I do create video content. So I may send them my TikTok page and it's like, hey, look, uh, I understand video editing. You, I see that you focus on this particular product. Uh, I can craft up a story for you to help you promote your, your product, your service, anything like that. Would you be interested in that? So yeah. because especially say we was in the pandemic, people need to make sales. And a lot of these businesses know that very few things are going to come for free. So as long as you can say like, hey, look, I have a solution for you. I see that you're having this issue. I can help you. Many times they're willing to pay. <laughs> I think that's really very um, precise, actionable advice. So thank you for sharing that. Um, anyone else on the panel want to weigh in on advice uh, during a job search? I think um, Kendall touched on something that's really important. And I think I've heard this from every single like mentor person in the business that I've ever sort of talked to is um, when you're looking at these, these job descriptions, you're going to feel really intimidated and you're going to feel like I have to check every single box on this job description. That's not the case. If you have 80 to 90, sometimes I even heard like, I would say 80 to 90 of what percent of what they're looking for, like however many bullet points that is. But I had a mentor who said, you don't even have to have 50% of what they're looking for in the job. You just have to be like Ryan said, you have to be willing to do it. And so the biggest advice that I could give and was ever given is um, it's scary to put yourself out there, but just apply. If you think that you can do the job and you want to try to get uh, to get into that field, get into that industry, get into that job, just apply. I love that so much because honestly, I am a walking, talking um, residual of that is like, you don't know what companies need you don't know where they're at and you don't know the power of just who you are as a person and how it resonates where they like you. They like you as a person. They see you as somebody that can learn, that's willing to adapt, that has, you know, the wherewithal to like understand the goal and the, and the, the longevity of like what the, what the company's, you know, ultimate uh, trajectory looks like. And you don't know that. So if you don't apply, you will never understand that. And so that is literally how my career has been built. And I am so grateful. And I love where I'm at in my digital marketing career. And I'm constantly learning. I, I don't know um, that I put enough emphasis, but like I applied for Neil Patel. So I didn't understand SEO, right? I came from, I worked with, for an agency and I like, didn't like really understand what all the other parts of agency look like and SEO is one of them. And so there was an opportunity where Neil Patel was like, Hey, you know, we're looking for 20 students, write us, let us know, you know, your situation. It's very expensive, but if there's some sort of, you know, like, like scholarship, opportunity will let you know guess what I wrote I was like hey I've been I'm you know a Latin woman I, I I I'm agency I don't understand everything um so they gave me uh a really great scholarship I did four months of straight straight a hundred hours of Neil Patel like learning SEO guess what you guys um, they offered me a job. First of all, I, I'm not into agencies, so I turned it down. Um, but I, uh, I, I understand SEO enough where my company who's global 
offered me the job to be a um, global, uh, like put global strategy in place for SEO and run the departments. And when I need agency support, I can let them know. But like, I mean, you just don't know where a company is. And digital marketing, you just like, it moves so fast. And so I, I'm so grateful for literally past stream, just putting me in the, in, in, in the path of like digital marketing. But secondly, like you have to just want to know more. You have to do the value add. You have to put yourself like, if you don't understand something, like get a class, like do speed reading, <laughs> like understand SEO, do the basic stuff. Like there is so much that is ahead of you. And um, anyways, I, that's, that's what I have to say about it, but I love it. I love digital marketing and, you know, just put yourself ahead of everyone else, because if you want to be more and do more and put yourself in front of everyone else, like you're good. You will, you will find success. success. One more thing to bounce off of. Rayanne and uh, Sammy, if you feel like, hey, look, I am I only know like 50% of this, but won't they rather hire the person that's 100% qualified? The person who is 100% qualified is going after the higher paying position where they're also like maybe 50% on that list. If they are applying for that job with 100%, they are getting underpaid. I think, you know, this is all sort of under the umbrella also of you don't know what you don't know. You don't know who's going for what job. You don't know what opportunities are out there until you put yourself out there um, and try and ran your story uh, with sort of applying and getting the scholarship and then your current role. It really is truly inspiring. And, you know, as you say, you really were you were curious, you wanted to know more, you wanted to put yourself at the head of the line and you deserve to be at the head of the line. And, you know, so, um, so yeah, really awesome. Um, so then we'll, we'll sort of cap off the formal questions here with advice for prospective and current path stream students that are considering a career in digital marketing. I think we've gotten a lot of really great advice so far, but would love to open it up to the panel um, for anything else that's bubbling up for you or anything you want to add to. I would have said it was really important to put yourself out there, but I feel like we've we've covered that quite a lot here. So, so the second thing that I would say is um, digital marketing is one of those uh, industries where you I think there's a misconception that you have to be really good at technical stuff and I think that or you have to be really creative or you have to be this or you have to be that um the thing I would say is digital marketing is sort of what a company says it is or what you think it is it is very one of those careers where you can shape it to you and your skills and just because you do email marketing or just because you do SEO, that doesn't define you and like, like put you in a niche. So it, it sort of goes back to that. Keep learning, keep doing things. But then also um, it's one of those you can really fit it to what you're good at. And some of the stuff that I've seen in the, the chat is, you know, I've done this or, oh, I do this or, oh, I've done this. Take that experience, shape it and then go out and apply for those jobs or work as a freelancer or, you know, take it and uh, make your business better. I see a ton of people all the time who they get into digital marketing because they want to further their businesses. Well, not only are you a business owner, you're also a digital marketer. You could, you can, you, you're not just one thing in digital marketing. Um, I spend a lot of my time advising clients and advising people how to do their marketing and that's that's sort of what I'm good at what I'm I like the strategy portion of it um if you ask me to do email marketing I can do that I don't want to do that but I will do it um and so I have really spent a lot of my career shaping it to me rather than trying to shape it to 
what the expectations or other people's idea of it is. So, so maybe start, start there if you're, if you're a little bit stuck. Sammy, it sounds like it's really important to know what your strengths are. And also I'm hearing like, don't limit yourself. I think we spend a lot of time saying, oh, I'm not this, or I don't do this, or I'm not that, but like, what are you, what do, what are you good at? And you can bring that to the table. Um, yeah. Brooke, honestly, like you, <laughs> you're so good because you hear us saying all these things. It's like, you know, um, I, I come from digital marketing and I come from, you know, agency, but it's like, you know, you, I, I think we all have passions, right? And so like one of my passions is helping small business, but like you have to understand like what your strengths are and, um, you know, how you can really like affect change. And so is it email marketing or is it, you know, SEO or is it website? Like, like really understand, like what's your passion and drive and lead with that? Because if you can do that, you can affect so much more than trying to be everything for everyone. Yeah. I would say that when it comes to digital marketing, you really have to be living that hashtag always learning life. It's like the more you learn about digital marketing, the more you realize how much you don't know about digital marketing. And it's like, it expands in so many different directions. And I think a lot of people see like the experts like, oh, wow, you know how to do all this and this and that. We get to this point because at some point we're banging our heads against the wall because we're trying to figure it out. Even those of us who took the course back in 2020 and are those who have been in this for like 10 years, we're banging our heads trying to figure out, oh my God, what did you update? What's going on with this? Why am I getting an error message? And then we have other people come in. It's like, yeah, this is what you need to do. And like, oh, wow, you're so knowledgeable. It's like, look, I went through the traumatizing experiences so you wouldn't have to, okay? So just know that if you are brand new, you're like, I don't think I can do this. Yes, you can. Trust me, we're all struggling at some point. But if you get into an industry that you're genuinely passionate about, it is worth it because you know that your hard work is going into something that you believe in. Kendall, I feel like you're talking about the uh, the power of the network again, right? <laughs> um, and if you have a question, somebody's got an answer, and likely you can you can figure that out. And also, I know you're so generous with your own time and information, and you want to be helpful. <laughs> so it, you know, it goes both ways. Um, yeah, it's like we now have an alumni Slack group. So once you do finish the digital marketing program, if you join the Slack group, especially if you get hired on somewhere, you're not alone. So if you're like, oh my God, I got this new position, but they're asking me to do all this stuff. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> you can reach out to the Slack members because most of us have gone through that headache. It's like, okay, yeah, we, we, we got some resources that can help you. So you don't have to bang your head against the wall like we did. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so... I had, uh, Nina, I had, I had advanced the slides here. And, and so this is just a little bit of, of information. Um, you know, if you want more information, pastream.com backslash programs. Also, maybe after today, there's a question that we don't have a chance to answer. And you're like, ah, oh, what do I do? Well, you can absolutely email enrollments at pastream.com. Just a little FYI for you there. And then we have some more workshops coming up. Um, how to break into a Salesforce career, how to answer the most popular interview question, tell me about yourself and ask me anything, which is a personal favorite. I'll be, I'll be honest. I'll be in the audience for that one. Um, I, won't, I won't be on the panel, but uh, so this is when we jump into audience Q and A. So if there's something you've been wanting to ask, I'm going to hand it over to, to Nina and go on mute and just absorb Um Thank you, Brooke. Yes, and thank you, everyone. Asked some fabulous questions. If you haven't had the chance, please check out the the Q and A. There have been some really thoughtful questions there, um, and one just came in, which I will start with, and then would love to hear from our panelists. Also, um, the question is: After you received your certificate in digital marketing, would you continue taking 
courses or classes to enhance your career. Um, and I'll first of all say just like keeping it to the Path Stream certificate that um, you will have access to your course for a couple of months after um, completing your certificate. So, you know, as folks have mentioned, maybe you're starting to freelance, maybe you got a job and you need to kind of uh, refresh your memory as you're as you're taking um, taking on job responsibilities, then uh, you can still access the course in that way. Um, and I'll turn it over to panelists. Would love to hear what you think about uh, continuing your professional development after you've taken a formal certificate like Pathstreams. Um, I would love to jump in. So this is Rayanne. Um, so I didn't really know what a path stream certificate would look like. And I was um, actually applying for a lot of jobs and I was like, hey, I have a digital marketing certificate. And it, honestly, people were like, yeah, who cares? Because they want to know that you have like experience with digital marketing. And so that was my challenge. And so I um, ended up, like signing on for a, uh, a job that was, um, it was an agency job. And I ended up being like, um, uh, uh, like uh, an AM, like, like a lead AM. And it was difficult because like, I didn't really understand how all the fulfillment side worked with everything. Um, and so it like, but it was it was learning. It was learning beyond path stream. So like I got baseline path stream, like here's how digital marketing works. But then I got into agency and it was like completely different because there was like a lot of people and I was like responsible for like, you know, reporting like like numbers and stuff. It, it, was, it was just different. It was it was I didn't know how to deal with it. So I ultimately hated agency work. Like for me, I don't like agency, but the beautiful thing is it actually gave me a lot of insight into how digital works, um, like on a, like a more global level. And so um, I understand like how SEO ties into PPC and how creative ties into campaign management and how, you know, like a content creation, you know, means for everything. So like, it really did give me like an overview of everything. Um, ultimately, I decided I hate agency, which is why I ended up going to like a, like a company, a, a global company that like I could oversee in a more strategic way where like, I'm not you know, given 15 minutes here, like where like I could actually give all my dedicated uh, attention to something. So anyways, um, long to short, like I, yes, past stream gave me a lot of insight into what I like, what I don't like. Um, and I, I, um, I understand how it works symbiotically. And I think that's the really, that that's the keystone is like, all, there's so many parts of digital and and you have to understand how they all work intertwinely and like you know where where your where you work best but like there's so much you can't just say like oh I'm part of this I'm part of that it's like no there's so much you know the storytelling the 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 PPC the the you know the website the all of it like it's it's just it's a big giant thing that you have to understand and you have to be a part of so <laughs> really great answer thank you ran um i want to get to a couple of these other questions um i see one how does the certificate help you to compete with individuals who hold a degree in marketing um and i think some of the themes I've heard as as questions have been answered are, are like that kind of always learning mentality and and putting out like real portfolio worthy work um, and getting that real world experience. Um, and that's kind of that's a big philosophy we have at Pathstream is like we're not trying to to waste your time with like 
tons of content you don't need. We're trying to get you right into a, um, a certificate that's aligned to jobs and get you that job and apprenticeship experience. So I would say that's that's a big difference between a certificate um, and a degree. Um, and then also just speaking to those kind of those boxes in job descriptions. I think one of the things that often makes people say, oh, I'm not you know, worthy of applying to this job is seeing something like degree required or recommended. But <laughs> I encourage you to uh, push past that bullet point and um, if you have a certificate. I didn't kind of add all to that because like my degree is in computer animation. So absolutely nothing to do with marketing. A lot of the projects that I was able to do came from the certificate, but with me being able to send them the portfolios that I did in the courses. So being able to show that I understood how to use Google Analytics, uh, being able to show that I understood how to set up Facebook ad, and then just doing my own stuff. It's like, I would say that maybe 80% of what I use as a marketing portfolio came from me just doing personal stuff and then showing it to people like, hey, I know how to do this. Like, fortunately, more companies is starting to uh, want skill-based learning instead of just a degree because more and more companies are starting to wake up that a piece of paper isn't really enough. Like we need to be able to show that we know what we're doing. Yeah. And to really piggyback off of that really quick, um, most people, some of the most successful marketers that I know don't have degrees in marketing. It's not a requirement. I have degrees in psychology archaeology and international relations. I have no education other than what I learned myself on the job in marketing. And so you guys who already have the certificate and everybody who's thinking about getting the certificate, you are already going to be like leagues ahead of everybody else who's sort of just getting started out. And if you don't know what you want to do, you will explore. You'll be able to actually learn to do all of the things that Kendall just mentioned. The the degree at this point doesn't matter as much as long as you've gone through college and and or you've gone through a certificate boot camp program you're proving out that you can you can do it so I really wouldn't worry about like degrees versus any of that formal education stuff it doesn't it doesn't matter I love I that think, oh, go ahead sorry uh, I think a lot of companies today are just wanting to know that you have at least a fundamental understanding so if you like a lot of the skills that goes into digital marketing are skills that you may have already picked up in the, the day to day stuff you do. If you worked in customer service, like I, I manage the social media side. A lot of the stuff I do on the social media side came from my years of experience in customer service. But the marketing side helps me understand how to communicate with them. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, and I want to answer a question from Jade asked if there are any certificate programs that are recognized in the industry over others. And if so, which ones are on the top of the list? Um, I think that's a really great question. One um, advantage of a pass through program is that it's co-branded with, uh, with Facebook or Meta, um, which you know is a, a large company we've all heard of. So grant some legitimacy to, to your certificate. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of our courses in the normal certificate is aligned with the meta um, certificate, um, the, the meta blueprint certificate, um, which is industry recognized as well. Um, the And the last thing I'll say about that is like it kind of once you go through the course uh, or the certificate and kind of determine which direction you want to go, I would say the industry exams or certificate programs um, might depend on which direction you want to go. Um, open to any panelists thoughts on. Yeah, for sure. So here's the thing about the, the question is um, there are certificate programs, there's continued learning, there's all of that stuff in every single part of marketing and almost in every single industry. And so that's kind of a hard question to answer. I can't really say, you know, do Facebook or do content or do do one of those things because every single piece has its own 
what you should be doing, continued learning, that kind of stuff. So it is so it is a very difficult, um, it, it, it's very difficult to, to answer because why would you do, you know, some Facebook stuff if you're going to come over here and do uh, uh, only organic marketing, like it, it or sorry, if you're only going to do like email, it doesn't make a lot of uh, of sense. So that's, a, that's the cool thing about past stream is you do get those pieces. And from there, you can figure out what it is you like or dislike. Again, I am not an email person. I do not like email, but, <laughs> but I have learned that over my almost 12 years of doing digital marketing. And so you, you learn as you go. Also, I'm not exactly sure how to say it better than this, but if you're talking to someone and if you get all the way to the interview or anything like that and you show them your portfolio and they're like, well, this portfolio is pretty impressive. However, you don't have uh, your certificate wasn't from an Ivy League school. You probably don't want to work with them because chances are they are running off some very outdated ideologies that's probably going to hinder you in your job anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Kendall. Um, and I think we have time here for one last question, which Sia, thank you for sharing your story and um, and kind of journey what you're looking for next. Um, I, I hope you have connected since you're already in a path stream certificate to our career services team. Um, in your last course of your certificate, you can start to work with those folks and, and navigate kind of what's next. Um, and then just like our project management certificate, Digital marketing starts with kind of a broad overview of what are all these different um, subcategories of digital marketing that you can explore um, and, and kind of aligning to uh, career outcomes um, that hopefully will help you get a sense of, of where to start. Uh, so my suggestions there would be connect to career services if you haven't already. And then um, Brooke previously showed an enrollment advisor um, uh, contact info, which I think she's going to put back up. So definitely schedule if you're like, what does the digital marketing certificate entail? Definitely feel free to schedule a free consultation with one of our advisors so you can learn more, see how those two certificate programs might uh, pair together. Um, but other than that, thank you so much, everyone, for your fabulous questions. Um, and for being here and a huge thank you to our panelists for taking time out of your busy days and professional lives.